Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of Geek.0. Sorry we had to take a week off, I had a week uh, full of traveling that uh, made my schedule a little too tight to be able to record and still be able to get some sleep. Nice Iron Man mug there, Sean. I was just uh, rubs that. it in my face all the time. Um, so we just wanted to touch base with you guys again. Um, Apple had their big event today, um, their big Spring Forward event. And so we want to touch base on some of that stuff, what our thoughts are on the new MacBook Pro, on the Apple Watch, things like that. But before we kick that off, I kind of want to toss a little um, acknowledgement out there to, uh, to Sam Simon. He was a co-creator of The Simpsons. He passed away uh, March 8th, which would have been yesterday at the time of this recording, um, at the age of 59 from cancer. Uh, it's always sad when we lose um, what I would say someone that was important to the geek sphere. Uh, last week it was Leonard Nimoy, which that was a heartbreaker. And then this week it's Sam Simon. So, um, you know, just wanted to give a little shout out to him and um, a thank you for the big bucket of awesome that he threw upon the world in helping Matt Groening create the Simpsons. So, absolutely. Uh, that being said, uh, Sean, I know uh, we're both very happy to be back recording here. And I know you were very excited about, uh, well, excited. I'm not sure if excited is the right word, but you were Geek. entertained. Geeked? Geeked, yeah, you were geeked out, Dur. Uh, you were geeked by the uh, Apple Spring Forward event. Um, let's talk about the MacBook Pro first. Um, then yeah. Apple unveiled a new MacBook. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are saying it's a little more Air and a little less Pro. <laughs> um, but what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, give us a little rundown on it, and then uh, you give your thoughts. I'll give my thoughts. We'll see what we think about it. All right, so... Let's face it, at this point, anytime Apple makes an announcement, the world goes crazy. Um, I, if you, you have to see this thing to believe it. Um, aesthetically, uh, it is definitely an Apple product. Um, it's very pretty. It's gorgeous. It's the thinnest laptop to my... I, I did some rudimentary research, uh, but it is the thinnest full-scale laptop in the world. So it's 13.1 mm -hmm. millimeters thin, um, which is just insane, um, beating even the, the MacBook Air. And it's gorgeous. Uh, backlit keyboard, um, all the things that you'd expect, uh, retina display, um, very nice. But what truly makes it shine isn't necessarily the hardware uh, on that side, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the thing that makes it cool and unique is that it's got USB Type-C on it. So I tried to find, we've been talking about USB Type-C devices now for, gosh, over a year, a uh, year and a half um, since the standard was approved. And to my knowledge, this is actually the very first consumer device with USB Type-C built into it um, to yeah. come to market. That, uh, uh, that in its own right makes it cool. And honestly, <laughs> that's the part about it that I'm most excited about. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, USB 1.0, 2.0, and all 3.0, I'm sure everyone's familiar with, they essentially just uh, upped the bandwidth um, for, uh, you know, uh, the bandwidth um, <laughs> Ceiling, excuse me, for the maximum speed of data transfer. But USB Type-C is truly, truly revolutionary. Um, it is a very small connector, slightly larger than a USB micro. Um, and it, transfer, it, it transports power, data, <laughs> and video on a single channel. So instead of That's having cool. to have uh, video outputs on your laptop and USB ports and power cord ports, all of it is in one single connector. Now, this works as a great benefit for a couple of ways. Number one, um, it makes the possibility of extremely light and easy laptops that are very, very thin because you don't have to have all the extra ports. Uh, USB Type-C is also bi-directional, uh, which is really cool, meaning power runs both ways, which means that the cords are 100% uh, swappable. You can, uh, it doesn't matter which end you stick in, they're identical. Um, and we'll get to that for the, the current time being. You're going to see a lot of... Uh, uh, converter devices, you know, USB 3.0 to Type-C, blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, the... So let me just preface this by saying nowhere during this event did Apple label this a MacBook Pro. They labeled this as a... MacBook. Oh, sorry, the new MacBook. Yes, it is the new MacBook. And I think that's a very important distinction. A lot of people are very unhappy with the specs on this thing. It uses a Broadwell chip. 
Um, so obviously it's nowhere near as powerful as the Core i7s you're going to find in the, in the Pro series. Um, I don't think Apple intends for this thing to be a massive powerhouse. Apple, literally at this event, I don't think anyone who watched it uh, could say otherwise, was literally strutting their feathers. This was a way for Apple to show off and, and uh, show off, you know, their their sexy, felt new. Look at us. We are a player in the fashion slash aesthetics market like you've never believed. See, That's it's, not gone away. Um, it's funny that you say that because there's people I, in a little bit of comment reading. People have said, you know, it seems like Apple's more concerned with being a fashion company now than they are being a tech company. And you can kind of see where they're coming from with some of the specs on some of the stuff. Yeah, well, this but. is not going to be a top-end laptop by any means. Uh, it's very, very gorgeous. And now we reach to some of the things that you mentioned, Chris. Uh, I want to mention it does have a revolutionary new keyboard that's got a, a special butterfly technique um, underneath each key that makes sure that all sides of every key um, have the exact same amount of, of pressure. So no finger sliding off the keys. It's supposed to be one of the most accurate keyboards ever. Um, it, so it's got a lot of really cool tech packed into a single uh, laptop. The problem, <laughs> uh, per se, is that it's going to start at $1,200. Which for, is an awful lot of money for the processing power. Yeah. For, for top-end device money, uh, essentially, starting there, um, I think, uh, once again, it's another example of extremely overpriced Apple products, which we'll definitely be discussing in, in great detail tonight. Um, but all in all, it's an exceptionally nice device. I think this is a perfect flagship to come onto the market to say, look, USB Type-C is here. Um, I would like to make one more mention. Uh, when I said that the USB Type-C is fantastic for two reasons, not only does it bundle all of that stuff onto a single uh, port, but it enables Apple to do the thing that it loves most, which is sell you a butt ton of additional connectors uh, to come off of that to make a single mm -hmm. cord cost five times as much money. Um, nice $79 dongle. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Apple is going to be back in the accessories market making a killing on, you know, 70 to to $100 cables uh, to, you know, expand the usage of this port. So, well. And what, what bugs me about it, uh, there's a couple things that bug me about this this piece of equipment. There are some good things. The The screen is good. The weight's spectacular. It's a two-pound laptop. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about the touch-sensitive trackpad. Yes. They're essentially going to a third dimension. try to eliminate right-clicking, which Apple's tried to eliminate right-clicking since <laughs> the iMac first came out um, and went single button. But here, here's my concern. It, I feel that it's underpowered to me when you look at it, especially with it being a Core M instead of like a Core U processor. It feels like they took an iPad Retina and attached a keyboard to it. And they're charging $1,300 for it. Which is funny because there was a <laughs> lot of speculation leading up to this event as if Apple was going to announce their the much rumored the much mm -hmm. rumored 12 inch ipad pro um and essentially that's what this is with a keyboard uh extremely yeah. extremely light it just it's clamshell design yeah um, but i'm not i'm not exactly sold i love it, the look it, it feels like netbook 2.0 <laughs> in a way to me it's kind of how it feels if netbooks and... cost six times as much yeah exactly well and if it was a netbook from apple it probably would cost six times as much right but here, here's my concern. USB Type C, yeah, it's great and it's going to be awesome in four or five years when everybody's caught up to it and it's time for USB Type D or whatever. But a lot of people don't even have USB 3.0 on their devices right now. Yeah. Um, and well, so yeah. and and the majority of the marketplace for Apple users is photo and video, video rendering, artists, photographers, people along those lines. There's no SD card slot. Um, and even that $79 dongle, you plug it in and you only get one USB port out of it. Seriously, you couldn't give them two USB ports so they could have an uh, external mouse and a microphone, for example, yeah. like I have right now. Well, don't, um, don't forget I just, Apple's... I just struggle with that. Apple's the king of that. Um, I'm not. I'm sure everyone remembers the new Mac Pro that we launched uh, mm -hmm. last year. 
um, this tiny little uh, super shiny, gorgeous little trash can looking device that's the most powerful Mac that Apple's ever built. They run upwards of ten thousand uh, dollars. You know, uh, actually, I do believe the Max configuration can run up to seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars. Which at least that's computer. a full size computer for that kind of money. But it's it's super <laughs> limited on ports. Everything yeah. fits into a panel on the back like this. Yep. And so what they did is they sold a ton of hub, dongles, hub yeah. connectors, hub con- so you can uh, well, you know buy extra expensive uh, Thunderbolt. And- and so here's what here's what I see. I see someone buying this new uh, this new MacBook, and they've got the seventy nine dollar dongle hooked onto that, and then they've got another dongle plugged into that, so they have multiple USB ports. And so the, so you got a thing that's like six inches long hanging off the side of your MacBook that increases the weight because all this crap's hanging off of it, and it defeats the whole purpose of it weighing two pounds and being twelve inches in screen size. Exactly. And, it, I just I struggle with that. You know the other thing I struggle with is that the front the front facing cam the FaceTime camera the front facing oh, FaceTime yeah. camera is only set is only four eighty p it's not even high def yeah so it's yeah. gonna look like crap on your Retina display and that's what twelve hundred dollars will buy you um, yeah you know what it reminds me of from Apple do you remember seeing those USB hubs that shaped like a little plastic man like mm-hmm. it's a single cord and it's got a big huge head and his arms mm-hmm. have cables coming off and his legs. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I picture hanging off the side of this thing is a yeah. single connector that's got all these dextra, you know, dongles hanging off all over the place. And it's a wad yeah. that's going to hang off the side of your computer that's going to weigh it down or you're going to be yeah. catching it on stuff. It's, I understand, yes, look, ooh, we got USB Type-C into a device, but make it a more compelling application. I think here's here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Give USB Type-C and then just give me one USB 3.0 port on the other side of the unit. That's all I'm asking. I mean, granted, I have two now, and I hate it. I wish I had three. Three, as far as I'm concerned, is the minimum amount of USB ports for a useful laptop. Agreed. Because <laughs> right now, like I said, I have my mouse plugged in. I have my microphone plugged in. If I need to throw a thumb drive in it, yeah, I can't unless I buy a freaking dongle. So, so now that we... Uh... Now that we have made our opinion clear on exceptionally overpriced but limited function devices, <laughs> let's talk about another one. So, um, Apple Watch. You know, I was really, 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 really excited about Apple Watch when they had their keynote back in September. I remember. I was ready to buy one. I and that was recently after I got my iPhone and still did not particularly care for it. Um, and still don't for that matter. Um, it's okay, but it's gotten better um, now that I can use a different keyboard on it. But 350 bucks for the opening price point unit, not a ton of... And that's a decent price. I mean, it's fine. That's fine. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a whole ton of third-party support for it as of yet. Um, you know, I'm, I'm honestly okay with that price point. Even at five hundred dollars, okay, I'm fine with it. I f- but I feel like this is going to be one of those units where it's like the iPad. You know, it's kind of thick and chunky for Generation One and Generation Two, and then Generation Three, it started to get a little bit more svelte. Um, it w- became a little bit more powerful, better battery life. You know, then it will be useful. Two three years down the road from now, Apple Watch will probably be a useful tool. Um, now I don't know. What I really don't know about is the is it Apple is it Apple Watch exclusive is that what it's called? Um, no, it's a uh, uh, oh god! Now uh, you just threw my executive uh, edition. It's edition, the edition. It, the edition. Apple Watch edition, starting at twelve thousand dollars. Correct, or is it starting uh, at ten thousand? Starts at ten. Just starts over at ten, 10 and just can, over ten. Yes, yeah, starts over ten thousand dollars. I want to say that again. A watch that will probably only have max 18 hours of battery life that isn't waterproof in any way, shape, or form that the technology will probably be outdated on in two years is going to cost anywhere between ten and seventeen thousand yeah. dollars. You know what I think I'd rather do with seventeen thousand dollars? I'd rather go buy a Rolex and a Breitling and still have enough money to buy like a small Hyundai left over and be able to pass those watches down to my kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. I, I can't fathom the thought process, process, the thought process between a five digit price point 
on a on a smartwatch. Yeah, I t- <laughs> you know Missy and I had a discussion about this, and I think uh, I agree with you. I think seventeen, I think ten thousand dollars is absolutely beyond ridiculous. Um, mm. There was some discussion uh, after the first keynote. A lot of people had 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 thrown down their predictions. And a lot of people in the tech business were expecting that the edition would end up running between five and ten thousand dollars at launch. Here's the deal, and this is where it gets really, really tricky. And this is where Apple and their economy and the the environment they've created in, in the consumer market has mastered an art form. There is the the Apple. It's the sport. Mm-hmm. Then the. I think it's just the watch. Yeah, I guess Apple, Apple Watch, Sport, and the edition. In the edition. So here's the deal. The difference between them is the alloy used to house them and the band. Yeah. Okay? This is yeah. where I'm starting to get upset. The difference is the alloy used to house it and the band. So here's mm-hmm. what happens. If I go pay three hundred and four. And in the edition it has a slight the, the edition has a slightly, slightly better battery. Yeah, slight, slightly, slightly bit better. But hardware-wise, these things mm-hmm. are identical. So I can yep. pay $349 for a completely functional and very nice iWatch. Apple Watch, sorry. Um, yeah. And Or I can go drop the money that I would on a Jaeger LeCoultre for an addition. And the only difference is the the alloy that's used to hold it. Now, here's this is where it gets funky. I think we should mention... Yes, the edition is housed in 18 karat gold. So this is not a chintzy watch by any means. It is housed in... Yeah, but, but you can buy an 18 karat gold Rolex for 3500 bucks. Correct. And let's, <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's make sure we get something clear. Apple is a master of the supply chain. So when you look at these profit margins on these things, okay? Um, another thing came out today from Yahoo that I that I kind of laid to... Uh, I don't want to use the word exposed, but, you know, pointed out that Apple has refined the manufacturing process for the edition. And the when you go to Jaeger LeCoultre, Rolex, any of the uh, Invictus, any of the Breitling, okay, all of your major luxury watch manufacturers, you're buying a quality watch with 18 karat gold in it. Now, I'm not a big fan of gold, but let's let's put that aside. The alloy is 18 karat gold mixed with nickel and you know a, a number of other precious metals to harden it up Correct. and yeah apple doesn't use any other precious metals they're using 18 karat gold mixed with small fragments of ceramic to mm-hmm. harden this to harden it to make it uh, harder and less destructible not as soft it won't scratch as easy but it also shaves an extra astronomical amount off the price of manufacture so what Apple's done here is taken a botch that probably cost them somewhere in the neighborhood, and I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt, with the, the electronics, okay, with the screen and everything else, plus the housing in 18 karat gold, maybe, maybe 350 bucks to produce, okay? And they're going to sell it for $17,000. That is highway robbery. And here's the deal. This is what's going to be a kicker. It's going to sell like hotcakes. I hope not. I doctors, hope people aren't that dumb. Oh, absolutely. Snooty ass uh, doctors, <laughs> lawyers, uh, celebrities, s- oh, yeah. stuffy Athlete. ass, stuck up people. Athletes will have who them have all to be, over the Who place. have to yeah. be like, yeah, I'm rocking an Apple Watch. Or get photographed and they are going to pay the money because they'll pay it off in three months on their credit card. No big deal. Yeah. They're going to pay seventeen grand, okay, for a watch that they could have bought for 400 bucks. That's mm-hmm. what cracks me up. And then, bought, me up and then bought another band for it and been fine. Yeah, and the bands are going to start at 50 bucks and they'll go up to 500 Yeah. So this is the most, literally, this has got to be on record one of the highest profit margin electronics products in the history of mankind. I think it might be one of the highest, project, highest profit margin products of any type. Yeah. Of all time, because it I mean, it's insane what and the I, profitability of this thing has and to I, be. And I told Melissa, I said I told her what the price was. I made her guess in the car, and uh, Missy's like, uh, she, you know, she guessed all wrong. She guessed really low. Um, and I kept telling her, "You're far off. Way go up." And uh, she, she asked me. She said, "Well, what do you get for it?" And I said, "Well, here's the deal. You get an 18 karat gold housing." Which is nice. It's pretty, you know. And it's um, kind of a rose gold too, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a really it's not pretty just like color. gold gold. It it's is a pretty. Very nice watch. Don't let me, uh, mm-hmm. you know. It better be. 
But here's the deal. If I pay $17,000 for a watch and you hit the, you said this earlier, I can go buy a Jaeger, okay? And I use them because they're definitely one of the benchmarks by which luxury watches are. One of the most benched. expensive watches out there. If I pay $17,000 for an entry level Jaeger watch, what I'm getting is a watch that's put together by a team of people that have been doing this for 70 plus years, okay? The ones that are still alive. Okay, the company's been doing it for far longer than that. Every mm -hmm. single component is hand milled, and, okay? Mm -hmm. It is literally hand stamped, and that is done and then overlaid with, with gold. I mean, every single piece is meticulously, it takes months and months and months for them to manufacture a single watch to order. That's the kind of craftsmanship you get for $17,000, and you get even yep. better for seventy. <laughs> But with the Apple Watch, you're going to get yet another watch that came off the assembly line, yep. okay, in China, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if they, had guys in a, if they had guys in a room somewhere, like yeah. in complete white glove, you know, hand placing with tweezers and building this thing, it'd be one yeah. thing. But well, it's just... Small Chinese children. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Employed I wasn't going to go that far, but yeah. Employed if, by yeah. Foxconn, so... Yeah, 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 the... <laughs> So, oh yeah. Those of us, those of you who know us, know that we aren't, uh, we are not Apple bashers. I know this this episode is going to sound like it sure sounds like it, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I happen to actually. Uh, my opinion of Apple has changed literally a hundred percent in the last three years. I used to, I used to resent them and their overpriced products. I see the value in some of the things they do. They do bring something absolutely phenomenal to the market. Okay, and craftsmanship, uh, and quality, wasn't... hardware. They do. If it wasn't for some of the things they've done to push the envelope, like the iPhone, we'd still be running probably Windows CE freaking stylus yeah. run PDAs and, and palm palm trios with keyboards and stuff instead of the, the nice stuff we have. So we can thank Apple for pushing the envelope on stuff like that. But man, I just, yeah, I mean, this, this is being recorded on a MacBook right now. So, you know, on Sean's end, I, I have a Lenovo, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, but, you know, we do appreciate Apple, but and by golly. To me, the uh, Apple Watch is ludicrous. I honestly will mm -hmm. contemplate once it hits market and once we see things, I would contemplate owning a sport. Um, because I If it would think, work with Android, yeah, I but it's think never it's going to. It's an innovative product that, uh, yeah. that does some cool stuff. Um, it, I really do like the idea that I could buy the sport and have my 5S be NFC capable. Yeah, yeah. That that's is, the that's one cool. thing that I really, 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 really like about it. Because um, it'd be nice to not have to screw with my debit card, never swiping properly ever again. But, you know. Yeah, I agree. So it's uh, six to one, half a dozen to the other on whether or not I, I think it's innovative or I think it's a ripoff. Um, I think it honestly, there's many arguments. Can't it be both? Both ways. Yeah. I think it's an extremely overpriced, very a, revolutionary product. Um, it's an innovative way to rip people off. <laughs> it depends if you buy, if you buy the edition and honestly, the yeah. fact that the fact that they're selling them at the three price points for me is the only thing that makes it uh, that saves it, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. If you go to Apple's website right now, I think I counted thirty-eight models. How in the world Apple's going to market this thing? I don't know, um, but I well, bet you it, they're going to sell. You say thirty-eight miles. You say thirty-eight models. It's really three models with different straps. Yeah, I mean, but it's they sell them as individual jobs. SKUs. Yeah. They don't yeah, say know. pick your watch and then pick your band. You know, they sell them. As... Which would be a much smarter way to sell it, but yeah, I think. But uh, it's whatever. yeah, it's Apple Watch, folks. It's here finally. You'll get to play with it. Um, the reviews. Yeah. I will say the reviews of the hardware um, are mm -hmm. exactly what you'd expect of a brand new tech product from Apple. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's so light. It, it feels smooth. Um, you know, it feels a little bit limited. Uh, we'll have to get some more play time with it to see exactly, you know, if it lives up. Yeah. To it's hard to, it's hard um, in 20 minutes to figure out what, you, what, what you think of it. Yeah. I will say so. that there was an engineer that, uh, that works, um, I, I don't remember for where MIT or someplace that said that the screen in it, is absolutely the the nicest, highest res, uh, uh, highest contrast screen ever in a smartphone. Or excuse me, in a smartwatch yeah. ever. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, so, there, there's definitely good to it. I mean, don't get us wrong. We we understand that there's good stuff about it. We're just really seventeen thousand dollars. That's what we're really talking. disappointed in the fact that the edition even exists. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it's so LeBron can have a nicer watch than you. You know what it that's, is? That's what it is. It's a caricature of all the jokes about Apple. Apple That's is exactly what it is. Apple is literally openly mocking the jokes That's about them and their overpriced products. Pretty much. They yeah. have released a product to market and said, ha, huh, look, we just released a, released these three watches. They're all the same, but this one's 17 grand and you'll buy it because it says Apple on it. And this one's exactly. So. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So we're running tight on time here, but yeah. there's one other thing that I really want to touch on because it really bugged me and it's and it's and I'm sorry, folks, that this episode's been kind of negative, but it's there's some negativity that needed to get out today, apparently. Um, one other thing that I want to talk about, is, it's South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who sits on the Senate Subcommittee for Privacy, Technology, and the Law, the Law, among others. So listen to me again. He sits on the Senate Subcommittee for Technology. He's never sent an email. That's uh, for those of you who don't know. That's essentially uh, that's that's our federal government. Um, that's the equivalent of somebody who worked in a video worked at a blockbuster for a few months now being put in charge of directing the next Marvel property. Oh well, mm. I, I like movies and I've watched a few, so I can now oversee the production and 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 manufacture of. A major franchise that's you know that's huge to uh, huge to the genre. Um, so this is yep. a guy who used to work for uh, be involved with telecoms, okay? Who is now the chair of the Senate subcommittee? Yeah, I don't think he's the chair. I believe oh, he sits on the committee. Okay, so he sits on the committee and he's never used email. Nope, and he I barely t he barely texts. And, and you know what? I will. I'll, I'll give him a email. look. I'll give him a little bit of a benefit here. He does. The reason he says he doesn't use it is because he prefers to have personal communication with individuals. He prefers to call or speak to them face to face. That's and I understand that. Yeah. And that's that's fine. It's good to have the. It's, so I really get that on the text messaging. But to to be sitting on a Senate subcommittee for technology and have never Absolutely. once sent an email, yeah, is not infuriating to me if you want to if you want to be a governor and you say look i don't do i don't do text and i don't do email i like to i like to see people directly i mm -hmm. like to talk to them face like to shake face. hands kiss babies that's things fine. along those lines I, yeah. I support that i think that shows you're a salt to the earth kind of guy who likes uh -huh. face-to-face -face communication you want to look at someone's eyes when you talk to them mm -hmm. but if you're going to sit on a committee and oversee and not only make legislation okay but guidelines and rules by which a technology is governed and you've never even used that technology, that is fraud in its purest form to me. I can't, I feel, I yeah. can't fathom that. He, he needs to be on the Senate subcommittee for roads or whiskey production or whatever else, but not on the Senate, sub, Senate subcommittee for technology. I'm biting my lip. It, I, He's from the it, South. It's just kill, it's killing me. Yeah. It's killing me. So that being said, let us know what you think of the fact that Lindsey Graham doesn't ever use email as, and is on the Senate Subcommittee for Privacy, Technology, and the law. Um, and then hit us up. Uh, we've got our website up and running. It's www.geekpointo.com. Make sure to spell out point. You can hit us up on Facebook, www.facebook.com. Facebook.com www slash geekpointo. Twitter.com slash geek point oh. Remember, you always have to spell the point out. Um, let us know what you're geeking out about with the hashtag what's your geek. And remember, it's better to be a geek than an idiot. Have a great week. I'm Chris. And I'm Sean Michael.